everybody. Chris Forey, NEBA president here with Dave Kipperman. Good afternoon. Vice Evening. president. And we are joined today. Who was that? <laughs> All right, hold on a second. I had to do some president. <laughs> Can I get the over? <laughs> yeah. All right, the, one of the past stars. Let's go through the rundown again. I'm Chris Forey, <laughs> NEMA president. <laughs> Dave Kipperman, second vice, pre or excuse me, first vice president. Joined by a former Secretary, everything. Secretary Treasurer. I think you've done everything in NEBA. Yeah, uh, I wasn't tournament director, but I was on the board and Secretary Treasurer. Uh, but we have Brian Bogosian, Hall of Famer. I love just, it, it sounds great to say that. NEBA Hall of Famer, Brian oh. Bogosian in the booth Thank with you, us. both of you. Um, so uh, quite the evening. Uh, quite Brian, an honor last night. Uh, it was, yes, it, uh, it will go down. I, I keep saying as uh, NEBA's, it's probably the greatest night in NEBA history. Uh, Absolutely. I, uh, the energy, I keep, and people are, if anybody keeps watching the streams over and over, going to hear the same things, but the energy in the room was amazing. Uh, a lot of emotion. Oh, my God, yeah. I know Amanda Broch keeps saying that she had to get up out of her chair and move to a different area because she couldn't stop crying every time people, say, you know, things people were saying. So um, it was that kind of night, uh, all positive. It was uh, obviously when you have a Hall of Fame, it is, but it was just, a great night to recognize not only the Hall of Famers, but what the club means to everybody. Yes, and, uh, a lot of a lot of good stories yeah. about that. And you're, you're a big part of, the, of why the club has succeeded. Uh, obviously, uh, it was mentioned last night, the club was in a little bit of a downward spiral before you took over as Secretary Treasurer, uh, some of the ideas, but also the history you, you, you've kept of the club. Uh, you know, or you, you, you're like Michael to an extent, like Steen, uh, you guys remember everything yeah like when i first started bowling neba the newsletter would come in the mail back in the day and they'd only list like first and second in points first and second in average and that just, wasn't much work yeah and it just didn't seem like you know they you know the entries were mediocre at the time and it just seemed like if you could maybe give a little more excitement to it that it would help the club out i thought in my mind and just create a little more energy and People did get excited about the stats. I remember I printed out like the top hundred or whatever it was, and people were just happy to see their names at the time. And people wanted recognition. They always wondered, you know, exactly how they stood, and you know, I always wondered myself how I stood. You know, like yeah. what place am I in in the points? And it was always fun seeing seeing the tournament results. As long as you got to the semifinals, you may, guaranteed made the newsletter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to have a really good day. Um, but I think, I mean, so I, I would want to say, say thank you. I told you many times. But thank you, though, for what you've done for NEBA. Um, oh, thanks. Cause, cause thank we you. Because we honestly, I mean, like I said to Bill Baker and all of the guys, from, you know, like yourself, um, we wouldn't have a club if it wasn't for you guys, um, you know, for the hard work that, that, that people, you know, yourself, obviously, you got it for bowling ability, uh, but obviously meritorious of what you did. Um, yep. The club, the club wouldn't be where it is without folks like yourself. Uh, yeah, thank you. Home. I appreciate it. I was real proud of the work that I did. I wanted to talk about it a little last night, but it was just hard for me. I didn't have anything prepared, and I wanted to try and say something, but I was also afraid I was just going to stumble and then get emotional, and I was trying to avoid that. Well, so here's, I, here's a great chance for you to talk, see? But I was, you know, I was real proud of uh, what I was able to do during those six years being on the being the secretary and I had a lot of help uh, from the rest of the board as well Marcel especially Becky Rick Cashel was the president you know we all kind of worked together and the board you know as a group I proposed some new rules and suggestions and to pass them along through the board with like high game pools and we started the brackets up at that time when uh, not everybody knew what a bracket was kind of I got introduced to them what First in Texas at myself, actually, I went to a tournament and oh, really? I it saw it? what a bracket was for the first time in 1988, I think. Was that the All-American? Was it, was it, it was the U.S. Scratch National Championship, I think it was called. Oh, wow. It was like 50000 for first. Yeah, I can remember the they had the, didn't they have a great American Classic or something like that tournament down that way. Something yeah, crazy. I don't remember that name, but 
Okay. They did have a couple tournaments down there that they were uh, big money, yeah. And at the time, that was I was just making my move where I starting to get a little better. Won a couple tournaments. I hadn't won NEBA yet, but I'd done well in a few other 24 game marathon I won in East Providence, and I just decided to go for it at that time. And that's when I saw what a bracket was getting back to that. Yeah, I remember uh, when I it was uh, I moved here in '92. And uh, and Nutmeg, they did a bracket. Uh, hold on one second. Right. Um, and I remember they did a bracket, and they were like, oh, it's $5. I had no clue what I was doing. Yep. It was like a house league at Nutmeg, and uh, they put in a bracket. A funny story about that is a guy that's getting into the Connecticut Hall of Fame this year, John Nihez, uh, a good friend of mine, he... I, I, I've just moved there, so I don't know any of these guys at Nutmeg. Yeah. And I'm bowling, and I, I'm in the final of the bracket. This is exciting. I'm in the final of a bracket in the league. And the guy says, uh, I go, who am I bowling against? I go, oh, the, and it, and Nutmeg didn't have automatic scoring. It is 92. They're like, the guy over there. <laughs> and I like, and he goes up, he throws a ball. If anybody knows John, he's a, a local star from uh, uh, Fairfield County. But he, he, John takes three steps. Old school bowling, three steps, lands on both feet, and no sooner the ball leaves his hand, he puts his hand in his right pocket. This is how he bowls. Wow. He, he keeps his thumb warm. I've, he always, he I've always never seen him bowl. Yeah, yeah. He he likes to keep his hand warm. So he's unique style. Throws it and he shoves his hand right in his right <laughs> in his pocket. So I'm like, that's like easy money right there. <laughs> I'm like, I got this. I go walking over. I walk a couple pairs over. I go like this, and he has the front ten. <laughs> wow. Sorry. Unreal. Uh, <laughs> he shoots 300 the final game of the bracket. I go over, I go, that, and, and then I'm going to nationals with him and stuff like that. But it's a pretty funny story. I always tell John that. I go, you took my money, and I didn't even know who you were. <laughs> and I thought I had it made. But, yeah, I mean, then brackets took off. Brackets were. Yeah, they, pe like, people kind of heard of them, but we finally introduced them to Neva. And then I remember, the, I think the first tournament, we had, like, 14 $10 brackets they were at that time. And then they slowly grew. At, oh, yeah. At one point, there was 60 or 70 no, no, at I mean, one time. Yeah, back when I won my uh, first title, I used to actually get in brackets. We, brackets are a struggle anymore, but back then, it seemed like more people were willing to gamble back then. Yes, they were. And I, I, won, I mean, I remember I would get in all the brackets, and it would cost me like seven hundred, or not, if we did five dollar brackets, it cost me like three fifty. Yep. Like, there'd be like seventy brackets, uh, a thing, and uh, I mean, brackets were huge from about ninety. And then Becky used to drive around Fairfield County and New Haven County running brackets and leagues at Milford. Yes. She would do the brackets at. That I think other place in Fairfield that closed. Circle Lanes. Yeah, yes. Couldn't think of the name of it. That's all right. Yep. I bowled there. Uh, and I used to back guys only. Marv Akers, uh, you know, the late Marv Akers. Yep. Uh, he pa before he passed away. Um, Remember Marv? He uh, he bowled out of, uh, he bowled at Milford uh, the last year before, he, year or two before. Was he, he out of. Stratford Town Fair was where he originally Yes, from. he was, yes. The Town Fair had closed at the time, so I was backing him in brackets. And I don't want to say how much money we made, but we did pretty well, so I don't want the IRS coming to find me. But uh, <laughs> I backed him, and he was at – it's a year he averaged 247 at Milford. Yeah, he was – I remember watching him in the PBA at Bradley a couple times, bowling in the Martin rabbit squads, I believe, yeah. back in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, very straight, but very uh, consistent. And, you know, you put him on a shot where – you know, a house shot where he could just jam it on ten. He was he was gonna get it there every shot and his We won the states together one year and he was on our team with like me, him, Lich, Webb. Oh, Marv, awesome. When it was at uh, Brookfield one year. Oh that's great. Cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's uh, I, I miss him dearly. He's uh, he was a good friend, worked in the shop with me and uh, but yeah. yeah, but yeah we made some uh, we made some good money for a couple of years with brackets. I backed Smitty Payne who's comes on the live feed here uh, Yeah, I love Smitty. I remember him from the Back in the days, Team Challenge and everything, oh, yeah. too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and Smitty's, uh, so, uh, Smitty's had some health issues. Yeah, I hope you're doing all right, Smitty, if you're listening. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, unfortunate car accident there. Um, but, uh, <coughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, brackets were huge. I mean, Bob Berlone, same thing. I was All these guys, I used to just go to circle. I didn't even bowl the league for a while. And Becky would run the brackets, and I would put all these guys in, you know. And, uh, I mean, we were getting, we would get, like, Probably about 75 to 100 brackets just at a uh, circle and a 20-team league of four. And uh, I know at Milford, when the Milford League was big and there were like yeah, 40 teams, she would get like. I pulled in Milford in like 93, 94 yep. season, 90, league. right around 95. Tuesday nights, I had about 40, yep. I had about 40 to 48 teams of, uh, was it triples? 
for the it four man. It was four man. It was four man. At nine o'clock, yep. I still remember Motorola walking out on the lane. I do too. He bowled against our team that night. Did, a, <laughs> did you ever hear this story, David? I think I know where it's going, but let's hear it. Motorola decides, uh, so Dave Motorola, uh, NEVA member, uh, decides to uh, walk out in the middle of the lane. And we're at the high end, of, he was at the high end of the house. The desk is down by like one to 20 area. Yeah. Um, and he's, uh, he's in the high the end. The league was on like probably 30 to 60 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we were in the high end of the house. He decides to walk down. Does a smear test from left gutter, from right gutter to left gutter at the arrows. <laughs> proceeds to turn around and scream at the desk. I didn't think so. <laughs> uh, so, I, and this is like 92, 93. It happened. 93. It happened, and I'm like, what am I doing in this state? This doesn't happen in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> I can uh, remember him jumping on the heads one time. There's no oil here. And he's like <laughs> scraping his foot on the lane. I can't. It's not, like, I'm not going to fall. There's no oil. It's funny. Uh, I bowled league with him at Milford when it, you know, this is a uh, 2000 me, him, Rich Valenti, and John Nee has the gentleman from Fairfield. Uh, we all bowl together. <laughs> he's Power th group. He, he threw a 12 pound bowling ball. He goes like four straight nine pins because he's doing a big banana shot and it's just like dead left. Just keeps going off and it, he comes. I don't know why I keep leaving nine pins. <laughs> Your ball's just going sideways past it. It can't stop. He uh, had the really sick spin run and roll the way through it. Oh, uh, oh yeah. He still does, I guess. Yeah. Just but don't we, see him as much. Yeah, we don't see him as much. But when he, he back then, he could really spin it and get a lot of revs on it. Yes, he could. He definitely could. Yeah. yeah like he had a Jimmy, lot of like Jimmy Strong, yeah. I thought we might see him this weekend, but I guess he didn't he, ball uh, yesterday. Yeah, we didn't see him, but he did chime in on the last feed. Um, oh, cool. What's up, kid? <coughs> but uh, what Jimmy we, uh, the kid, huh? Jimmy the kid. That's what he used to always called everybody. Kid. Yeah. Hey kid. Hey kid. What's up, kid? Yeah. Got us all saying it. We. <laughs> I got. I call everybody kid now because of him. <laughs> We're up to uh, 76 viewers. So if uh, didn't do this earlier, if you are watching, uh, please uh, share the feed. Uh, so every round we're going up there. But again, in the booth, I have uh, Brian Bogosian, Hall of Famer, newly inducted Hall of Famer. That sounds great. Thanks again. Oh, for, my God. Uh, I, see, I, what I, a great I, night. I know it you was. guys are going to laugh. I get chills every time I keep saying this. All the work you guys put in for uh, you know all us bowlers, we really appreciate it. Well, it's, Thank uh, you. I, I, you know, it's one of those things. I don't want to just say me, but it, uh, as a committee. But I, you know, I know a lot of people keep thanking me because I, I, I really busted my butt the last four months. You organized months. the whole banquet and... Everything, as far as I saw. Yeah, I did a, I did a lot, and uh, and uh, Becky helped out a lot at the end. Dave, Dave helped out a little bit. A little bit. Everybody, everybody, chi you know, we had a little group, but uh, I mean, I will say I did, I did do a large part of it, and uh, it was, a lot of it was because I wanted it to be a night that nobody will ever forget. Um, say mission I, accomplished. Yeah, I was just gonna took the words right out of my mouth, Dave. I, I just felt like I felt like, uh, I, and I'm not from New England. And I have no problem telling anybody that, but I, I feel like uh, the club means a lot to me. Um, and I feel like the people that I felt like it was, if it wasn't going to get done on my watch as president, it was never going to get done. Um, and I, I, have no pro and I yeah. do know that was, I do know I that. I can remember being in those board meetings and it would come up on the agenda. It always came Neba up. Hall of Fame, like new item, Neba Hall of Fame. And, and you talk about it and then that was the end of it. And then lit literally... 10, 20 years went by until it actually, you know, came to fruition. No, no. And, uh, you know, and uh, I can tell you, I, I'll tell a funny story. I won't say, you know, but in April we had a little debate going on uh, about the Hall of Fame. Uh, I believe it came down to the speaking and stuff like that. And uh, I think I pretty much sent an email out saying, and, and uh, I remember Tony Renault came to the pro shop. Uh, and I just said to Tony, I said, I'm going to tell you something. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, if we don't do it the way I want to do it, then I'm not doing it. And you guys will never have a Hall of Fame. I said, because I'm telling you, I said, this this needs to stop. It just needs to happen. I said, because this is why we always keep delaying it. Because I, And that's great. I, I love that we have a board. I always say Neva's great because we're run by the bowlers for the bowlers. Yep. But at some point, we need to have somebody take control and say, because my thing is, 10 years from now, if they decide to do it, Half those people might have passed away, and that's not right for us not to recognize those and, ha and them have that night. Yeah, you had it just in time where there was still guys who joined the first year or two who were I mean, still able to come to I mean, the banquet. Frank Anton, Orv Gordon at 85 years old. Yeah. I mean, so. Ed's been around since the beginning, Ed Roberts. You know, Ed Roberts, 70, 72 or Bar something. You know, Barry, you have to be, not necessarily the first year, but he was in there Pretty in the early. 60s. He was there. 
But again, again, we uh, to me it was it was disrespectful that they already knew we were working on something, and now it's disrespectful to them. At the same time, let's honor them while they are still alive, uh, while they're still with us, and, and give them the recognition they deserve with them being there for it. So, um, so I, it, yeah, it, it was so, so I, it, you know to it me, it was great. You stepped up for our, the club. You know that's something you'll be able to be proud of from now, 10, 20 years from I, now. Uh, I think last night when the night ended, I, I, and it came. It, it really came together the way uh, Viali, myself, and the rest, of, and Becky, and Danny Kay, the ones of us that wor really, really worked hard. Uh, Calvin Sellers, who put the amazing book together. Yes, he did a great job with that. It, uh, you know, when we when we got to see those books go out, I remember Calvin like he could not wait to open the book when they were hitting the table. Like he was passing, he just I'm like you're not allowed to look at them yet, and to see the pride that he he had in that of, of the did work. it pretty quick too. Those books aren't easy to get them all together yeah. that fast. I told Viali what's, what's interesting. We all bowl, uh, Dave and I bowl a, a sport league at Nutmeg in the summer. Yep. Calvin bowls too. We have a nice size league. Calvin actually has not, has bowled three or four weeks of the entire season. He missed the league to keep working on the book. Wow. And even the couple of weeks he was there, he was working and on it. And when he had it, he'd bring the computer so him and I could work on the book together. Um, you know, so I could proofread, show him the things I want changes made. Uh, and, and so I, I, again, I cannot thank him enough for the book. Uh, and the yeah, thank you, Calvin, as well for all your efforts. It's, it's, yeah, it's when great to see some new people that are, you know, helping stepping out, up, yeah. stepping up with some of the things that, you know, just putting their time in. It's, that's what it took even back when I started. It just needed a little time and effort really? to help promote the club and get people to start bowling again. And that's what you guys are continuing to do, you know, with this stuff that you're doing now. Yeah, I just, I just I'm, I'm a person. I uh, obviously I'm in business for myself. Uh, I've always been a person. I've my father made me a leader or a person that believes in leading. I honestly wouldn't be a president if it wasn't for Alex Aguirre, who's wandering around here. But Alex uh, and Becky came up to me, six, well, five years ago now, and said, "Would you be vice president? Or you know, would you become second vice president?" You know, Viley currently was gonna, was going to be the next one. And I'm like, ah, you know, I'll do this. And I, I'm not trying to pick on anybody else, but I'm like, oh, not much really gets done. You know what I mean? Well, how hard could this be? <laughs> um, yeah. And here we are. You know, you, well, then, you asked. You know, and then uh, and obviously, you know, I told my guys. The it's guys as hard as you want to make it, I guess it could be the answer. Yeah. I mean, the guys that work for me, uh, you know, they were a little frustrated the last couple of months because they were like, you know, all you're doing is sitting at the computer working on this Neva stuff. And I'm like, well, if I don't get it done, nobody's getting it. And I'm not trying to pick on anybody, but I just, that's how I felt. And I'm the kind of guy that if I feel like, something has to be done a certain way I want it, I'm going to take over. Yep. Yep. And, uh, and that's what that needed. It needed that. It needed that leadership. Yep. And so I felt like, uh, and like I said, and I kept trying to tell my guys, when this is done, there'll be no, I, I don't, I don't anticipate anything else on the horizon <laughs> for Neva that I need Not to like, tackle like that. of that, of that extent. But uh, it's been truly a, uh, a wonderful experience. The night last night, as we keep saying, was was tremendous. I mean, you were in the front row. You had a front row seat. Yeah, had great view of everything. You know, it was perfect. I got to sit with uh, Stoke and Lich, two of my best friends in the club. And my yeah. wife, I want to thank my wife and uh, Danny Kay and, and his wife, Carol. Uh, we worked on the seating chart. That was, most people thought they were going to just go sit where they wanted. No, I, I, and that was planned, too. I really worked hard at that because I wanted to, I felt like putting people in the right areas. And not, and not not the right areas, I should say, but putting with the people I know. Yeah, they like you had Lich in the perfect spot. He deserved to be sitting right where he was sitting there. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, and Larry right next to him, you know, his dad. Exactly, exactly. And so Mike Collins right next to Larry. It was perfect. Yeah, I mean, it just all it all, it all came together um, so nicely. I mean, that, that you know, <laughs> once, once the microphone worked, so nobody would know this. You guys were all downstairs. We had some uh, technical issues for about an hour. Uh, we were stressing. Bruce and I were stressing a lot. Uh, yeah, I saw that when you people touched the microphone. It was stressful. Well, that was a little <laughs> bit of an issue. The, the main issue is we couldn't get the sound right, uh, so nobody could really hear us. Uh, so luckily the gallery worked with us, uh, with Calvin and Tim Gillick. Uh, and Calvin's obviously, if no, most of you don't know, Calvin's a musician. He actually travels the world. Did not uh, know plays that. Plays music. Uh, so Calvin uh, obviously knows audio stuff, so... Uh, we end up Sound guy. We end up getting it fixed, you know, straightened out. But it was a, it was uh, it was stressful because the microphone didn't really get to the over the podium. So we ended. Luckily, they had another uh, mic stand that worked out, uh, and things worked out. But for about an hour, I was a uh, little concerned. Whew, uh, yeah, I was uh, I was thinking, how are we gonna, you know, this is gonna be really sad if we don't have a microphone that works. A mic stand is gonna work for us, you know. I mean, we could have held the mic; it would have worked. But we we you know. 
you don't really want to be holding a microphone for four hours. And the timing of it was unbelievable. I mean, we started at, we started late. Uh, yeah, the, the tournament got done mm -hmm. a little later than anticipated. The tournament got a little late. And obviously, with the mic issues, we didn't have everybody come upstairs right away. And then everybody went to the bar, which obviously we had open bar. Uh, everybody went there to get their drinks before sitting down. But, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I thought we were going to be there at 12, 1 o'clock. And we wrapped up at 1030, and every single person said something. Yep. And uh, if so, and if if I would have told everybody that, like Dave and I said before, if, if I would, the debate in April was, will everybody speak? And everybody's like, you can't do that. We'll be here for like eight hours. We had 50 people talk, and we were done at 10:30. Yeah, it wasn't hours. even that late. And we took an hour to eat. So yeah. three hours, we crammed 50 people in, and people could sp people could say whatever they wanted. So yeah, there was no. It was like a Tim Cornelia got cut off. That was I mean, yeah. you know, trying to keep it short, under two minutes. But, but, but again, everybody just, kept it like under thirty seconds or a minute. A lot yeah, of people. And some people went over and we didn't stop you. Yeah. You know what I mean, it worked out. Only a couple people, like three maybe. Yeah, but I mean, it's, again, it's it's your night. We're not going to ruin. And the that's night. fine. You just don't want fifty people going over. Well, yeah. That would have been bad. And honestly, I don't think a lot of people. You know, I could tell you from the survey that went out, only about twenty five actually wanted to speak or say anything at all. So, yep. it uh, like I said, it went well. So. Uh, yeah, this match is flying by here. They're all in the tenth frame and yeah. finishing it goes, up it, already. It goes quick when you're talking. I, I don't. I'm a guy. I don't. Uh, until Bruce gets in here with me, then we start watching scores and analyzing everything. But when the first couple rounds are going, I just like to talk, and that's why I like having like yourself or Mike Collins in here uh, or anybody, you know, because it's great to for our viewers to hear from you guys. Yeah, I was hoping I could get a chance to come in the booth. I'm glad that you invited me over. Oh, Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely, anytime. I mean. Uh, um, I think, like I said, I mean, right away I, when I said you were here, I mean, all of a sudden, the, you know, we start getting, you know, hey, Brian B., you know, you know Hans Fecko out there. So Tony Renard would need to double here. Yep. Double yep. and eight to advance. Yep, now's when we actually watch a little bit, so. And uh, Natasha Bidwell. Tony's great host here. It's going to Put out John a great Lover. spread for us today at lunch, too. Yeah, he did a. We had a nice ceremony, and then he put a spread in the fire for all the Hall of Famers and everybody. It was wonderful. That was Tim my and his uh, wife are great. That was my last, uh, the last thing of today. The only thing that was stressing me out a little bit was, uh, you know, and somebody, somebody said to me during the week, well, they don't need to walk out or do that. I said, yes, they do. We had, yeah, again, that was nice. again, it came down to recognizing you guys. And, and, and not, obviously not everybody here that bowled the tournament got to go to the dinner. Yep. So you know what? Let these people see. Again, who all, and not every Hall of Famer stayed around, to, you know, but we had a still a great time. I think we must have had about 40 of the 54. Yep. Um, I don't have the exact list. I saw a lot of the guys who didn't bowl, you know, but they still came back today and came yep. down. Tony with that hit, big hit that for guy. him. That guy, that guy. Needs eight, eight to win. Yep. Natasha I Bidwell. feel like he's bowled here before. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, to me, I just, when I had this in my vision, it was like, how do we, you know, that night had to be a certain way, but today had to be a certain way that you got your respect, not only you, but every single Hall of Famer got the respect, not only from the people that went to the dinner, but from the club itself, from the bowlers who couldn't get there and probably don't even realize how important it is. And they see that we did things the right way. Yeah. And I mean, it just, I know Mitch Sachs from New Jersey bowled his first Neva yesterday. He was second Neva. He actually second. bowled Neva doubles with Mike Mullen. Okay, uh, so I, I only know that because I crossed with him. He basically never bowls Neva, no, but he, exactly. he bowled yesterday and came to the banquet because he's a friend of Billy Spigner and he, I heard him, you know, compliment how great a banquet it was, and he's been to several banquets. And oh, absolutely. His own association was just last week, and he was saying how great ours was. And yeah, nice. it, yeah. I mean, it, it, it was. Uh, I will say the nice thing is every single person coming up and thanking. I'd like to say thanking me for the evening, and it made me really feel good that I I know that. It, we pulled off the, and I say we as a team pulled off an amazing job, and uh, it's great when they say that this is the best one that they've been to. It makes me realize that we really, really did it the right way. Yeah, on behalf of everyone, all the Hall of Famers who aren't here and stuff, I just want to say thank you again one more time, oh. Chris and David, for well, everything that you did, and Chris, Janine as well. No, thank Calvin, you. Calvin, thank you. It's, yeah, I, I, I'm very thankful for Becky, my wife helping out because. Obviously, Danny. it takes it takes a lady's touch. I know sometimes. Danny did some work. I got emails from Danny too. Oh yeah, no, Danny was my uh, he was him and Becky were my two right hand people next to David. It's a great addition to the Neva staff. We came along a couple years ago, or so 
That was a great doing a great job. I got a little story I can tell you, but you might you won't even know this. But Danny was a the applications had to be in Friday night at nine o'clock. It was Friday about noon time. He comes to the pro shop, and I say to Dan, Tim and I just look at him. We go, "Do you ever think of being you. a Neva tournament director?" <laughs> he goes, "What?" <laughs> I go, "Neva tournament director." I said, "He goes, what? Do, what are you talking about?" I said, "I just need you to fill out, just send your name in." I said, "We'll tell you the answer, how to answer the questions." <laughs> <laughs> so he came to my house for dinner that night. The interviews were on Saturday. I was I at those interviews. I remember those. Hope we do a phone interview with each person. I give him a quiz. I say to Dan, I said, "These are things you need to know. You know about Neva. Yeah. You know, not, you know, not not about it, but to understand this is what the, and these are the things. Since I'm vice, at that time, I was vice president. I was no, I was my second vice president. I believe Tim Healy was still in charge then. I could be wrong, but uh, I pretty I much. I think Alex was in there too, but I don't know if he was already. Past Alex, president was already, Alex was already gone when uh, okay. Danny came on. Yeah, okay. I think, I think Healy he was president. He was just the past president then. Healy was president. But either way, I said, you know, this is how you do it. And, and Danny's been a, uh, he's been done an amazing job. Uh, he's, he'll, do yes, any, he has. he'll do anything I ask for him, uh, from him. Um, he, he was great with the emails, getting you guys emails out about the Hall of Fame and all that. I would send him over what I needed done. And uh, it takes a t it takes team, a teamwork. And uh, I feel like our board as a whole is, uh, is that. But our the executive committee really really uh, does a great job so yes well thanks again for having me in the booth yeah I anytime you want to join us that'd be uh sure just tap me on the shoulder like to come back again hopefully i can be around in some of the cuts and hang around at the end you notice i'm sitting here a lot so i haven't been making a cut lately <laughs> ditto yeah it's it's it doesn't get any easier as you're getting older it's harder for no me. no i yeah i somehow uh, somehow i'm a uh, 60 pins has dropped off my game in the last 10 years <laughs> i yeah, don't make the cut I'm good for 130 over every block. Some days that's good enough. Other days you're 30 short. On the sports <laughs> shots, it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> on, the, on this, it's not Yeah, good. not so much. So uh, with that being said, again, thank you, Brian, for joining us. Uh, coming up next, we will have uh, myself, Bruce Hall, and Alex Aguiar will be joining us. Thank you again, David, for joining in. Anytime. Thanks for having me. All right, guys.